<laughs> it's, a, it's, it's the most special place in the world for me. It's home, home, sweet home. And um, it's the place where I feel most connected. I was 10 years old, believe it or not, young and innocent. It really brings back memories to stand in the same spot as I did in 1949 and some relative probably took the photograph, I don't remember who it was at the time. We might go to the square which, where the house is still standing and my family go back there maybe for four generations and I loved Lucan because we had a walk every day and if it wasn't primroses it was bluebells and blackberries and jumping into the liffy at the weir and imagining all sorts of wonderful things and having picnics and what have you. Um, amazing. Yeah, amazing. Everybody lived for everybody else in a great community and things were passed over and things were passed on and if somebody had a birthday everybody got some of the cake or the apple tart or whatever it was that was made for the birthday and everybody was connected just here I think just behind me was the gate into this cabbage field I can't remember the name of the person that grew the cabbage here but it was mighty cabbage no, I'm just having memories of the square years oh, ago. Here, well, I came here on holidays. Yeah, I belong to the O'Sullivan's. Yeah. I just still have the memories. I can hear the peacocks in the domain and I can see the crows flying over at nine o'clock when you had to come in or whatever time crows go to bed at, you had to come in. This, to me, is one of the most contemplative places in the world. The, the silence, the stillness, and all you can hear, if I stop talking, is bird song and a rustling, maybe, of leaves whenever the wind begins to blow a little bit, a breeze begins to blow a little bit and this stillness for me connects with an inner stillness that I think is a wonderful place to be um, but I would have to say that I have only developed this inner stillness in the last um, in the last maybe 15 years of my life, um, the hurly-burly of life before then and the fast lane and the noise of the world was just so, it bombards everybody. But in this place, coming back here today, I can still feel this wonderful stillness and that connection it's peace. It's peace. Yeah. I was talking about the... Uh, oh, you said if, if you go out to buy... Out shopping yourself, what would I buy? Uh, I would... Uh, I would tend to buy the same things. Things that I like and that. Uh, but I'd always like to look good, you know, to look well. I think it's good for yourself, image. I would never wear anything outlandish or... I wouldn't want to draw attention to myself. I think that's the Irish male is always, don't draw attention to yourself, you know. Well, I personally just go with my own style and if I see something I buy it and it lasts forever. And if I have something that's maybe 10 or 15 years old and I think it's my style, I'll wear it. That's my idea about the style and the fashion. And really since I hit my 60s for the past 20 years, I would find 
it isn't that easy for older people to get something that's suitable for their age group because it's either too oh, trendy, trendy, gungy, hippie, whatever you're having yourself for a younger generation, which of course looks quite um, unacceptable on older people, or else you get this uniform. I think the fashion houses, the retail houses, uh, seem to think that all older people um, suffer, uh, that their waistline disappears completely, that they suddenly develop a more rotund image, which may be true, but this uniform that's now presented for older people is so lacking in imagination or creativity or anything else. It's either trousers and a skirt and straight from the shoulder with no waistline, no hint of any kind of a body shape at all. Supposedly being kind to older people to cover their lumps and bumps, but not really, not really. Um, it's not, it's really not um, regarding older people as still living extensions of what they were in their youth, which was interested in fashion, interested in uh, looking good, interested in being attractive for their husbands, partners, girlfriends, boyfriends or whatever. And um, it's, it's assigning the older person fashion-wise to the most, a category of the most unfashionable that you could possibly imagine. But then when you think of even, even big social occasions, I mean, men are just stuck in these suits generally. The, the dicky bow and the monkey suit, as they call it. And but women are more adventurous, of course. They go out and they splash out and whatever's going. But maybe men, men more than women are in this kind of a straight jacket as regards fashion. Because there wouldn't be a lot really that men, I mean, the fashion doesn't really change that much in men. I mean, I, in this photo I'm wearing a suit with short trousers and probably I'd go out today and I'm wearing a similar suit with long trousers and that's about the only difference, collar and tie. And uh, I don't wear the skull cap or the skull cap as we used to call it, the, the Brendan Grace cap. <laughs> but I mean, men's fashions don't really change that much. Well, I've asked lots of people over the age of 55 and 60 about this, telling them what I'm doing with you. And somebody said, oh, for goodness sake, should they only do clothes for teenagers and up to 30 year olds? And then after that, the fashion is all for outsized people, enormous people, and not for average size. So they are left on a limb and then some of them have an attitude, oh, but we're old and we can't be dressed up. And then other older people look at you when you are dressed up and say, oh, look at you all dressed up, where do you think you're going? And that puts people off being all dressed up. When my mother was 55, I remember her being very, very stylish. As a matter of fact, the picture is inside in a black suit and a little hat with a black and white touch in it and she looked the bee's knees and everybody thought she was mutton dressed up as lamb. And she was only 55 at that time. Now they're telling you at 70 yards you're mutton dressed up as lamb, if they have the cheek to tell you, <laughs> you know. But um, most people do say, like, where do you think you're going? Then there's other people who are delighted if you're a little bit stylish and a little bit daring to be stylish. It would be such a boost to the morale of most older people to have to feel that they weren't consigned to the scrap heap of Irish fashion and could present themselves in a way that made a difference to the way they felt in themselves and as well as that, uh, which I think is very important in a person's life they could present themselves in a way that would enhance the lives of the people that they came in contact with.
constructed it into this, you know. And I have the zipped up jacket and the trim that was on it for buttons, I folded over and put it around the neck. And I did these buttonholes and I have a completely different item. So depending on what you'd be doing or where you'd be going, you'd wear it. Very cosy. <laughs>